The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648 or internationally at 727 873 7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. And good afternoon and welcome to the uh, November 8th, the fabulous. Friday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one and an extraordinary weekend. And the easiest way that I know to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I am absolutely grateful for your presence here, but much more important than that. During this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, we've got you covered there, too. You can just send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject, and if you'd be kind enough to put radio show question, of course, in our Tiger's Den, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Fantastic Fabulous Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, we got a, really a flat market out here. The Dow's off 31. The S&P is totally flat. The Nasdaq's up 13. Russell's up one point. Uh, semis are flat. New York Stock Exchange off seven. So uh, um, not much really going on. Spot volatility Index is off two and a half percent, down 31 cents. 12.42 is what it's trading at. Gold's trading at 14.62. 14.65 is the key number. I say if we close below 14.65 today, uh, put on your seat belts, folks. Gold headed lower. Lower! Much lower out there. And uh, we'll take a look at that. We'll take a look at the U.S. dollar index. We'll take a look at some price areas for where price is likely targeting. Uh, silver's off 21 cents right now. She's trading out at 16.79. Leading the charge dollar wise, the upside. You've got booking holdings. It's up 48 bucks, 2.5%. Ubiquity Network's up 45 bucks, 34%. That's a big move. Regenerant Pharmaceuticals up 4% or 13 and change. Axon Enterprises up 12. That's 23%. Stamps.com up 15% percent 12 buck rooney so there's things moving to the upside shaking to the downside it is metafast mbds the ticker symbol off 30 bucks that's 30 percent and up and up tie and up ticker symbols a n a b i'm not going to try to pronounce it because i'll botch it as i've already done down 71 percent apparently they're not they're not uh, uh, they're having trouble that's for sure. That's a haircut. Uh, NV5 Global is down 23% or 16 bucks. Mettler Toledo off 15. Uh, let's go to our first caller, and that is uh, Jim in Palm Harbor. Jim, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you? I'm, I'm good, Steve. Thanks for taking my call. Uh, how are you today? Uh, very good. Thanks so much for asking. And uh, what's the ticker symbol that you want to look at? I think I've uh, got a, 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 the wrong symbol, but what is it that you're looking for? Okay, it's LAM Research, L-R-C-X. Got it. Okay, LAM Research. Okay, easy enough. Yeah. So t tell me what you're doing and how I can help. Uh, I was just, uh, I'm not in it. I was looking for a good entry point and uh, just wanted to hear uh, your analysis of it. For I'm looking for a trade, not a long-term hold. Okay. All right. So let's go take a look at LAM Research. L-R-C-X is the ticker symbol. And you're looking for an entry point. So here's what we know right now. You know, big move this week, well, maybe it was last week, was on the trading day of October 24th, yeah, a couple weeks ago. Uh, big volume to the upside, 5.7 million shares, a nice big gap out there. Price is above its daily profile. Uh, so the, the entry price that I'm going to give you even for a trade, you're going to have to be pretty patient. And I don't know if price is going to get back there. But right now, that's 241.50. That's the top of its daily profile. 
It's well above its daily, weekly, and monthly. And when I take a look at the daily time frame charts, the other daily time frame chart, I should say, um, what I don't really have, well, let me do a little wave count here to the upside, see where this thing gets to. Probably have to do several of these waves. But I don't see here initially a, well, we're just going to do this here. Um, so I don't see a real topping signal. I don't see a topping signal per se, but we do see that price is pulling back and price right now. The only thing to guide me with this, uh, Jim, is that price is below Stevie's um, green line, which is 276.63. And that suggests to me that this is just a normal retracement and price will pull back. But pull back to where um, I don't have any other values other than. Really, other than other than uh, two forty one fifty, and what I would assume would might take place out here, Jim, making assumptions is a bad deal, but it's it's possible that we'll see a new profile form uh, at some point in time here, whether it's next week or maybe the week after to provide us with some additional information. But I don't have a, you know, on a monthly time frame, let me just pull out the monthly time frame chart here for Lamb Research. And what it did last month, Jim, was it did make a TD, well, it did two months ago, it made the TD set up nine count a high, but that high can come on the bar following, in this case here, the monthly bar, so that would have been last month, October, and price is also moving higher, doing less relative energy. This only becomes a problem if lamb research falls off the lamb, so to speak, and generates some type of bearish reversal candle, which would need to take price down into the 220, 230-ish area out there. So. Um, I, I don't have, I don't have, I, I wish I had something better than that for you. Uh, but uh, well, no, so actually, actually, what? that's uh, one the reason I called, and I, I'm not in it. I'm just watching it. Uh, you're actually kind of confirming what I was thinking. I, I felt like it would either pull back to the top of the gap or or the bottom of the last candle before it gapped up. Uh, and I, I was just wondering uh, what you thought there. I noticed the volume had been low on the daily chart for the last six days, and. Um, I just felt like it, it possibly, it's very volatile anyway. It moves a lot on the average true range. But, uh, right now it's moving about $7.42 a, a day. And I thought, well, it, it's pretty volatile, so it might pull back to uh, the top of the candle on the 22nd of October. And and I, I, you're just kind of confirming really what I was kind of thinking, that that would be a good area around there. But I didn't know if it might be at the top of that gap or at the bottom of the gap. <laughs> yeah, and, and so we don't know. So if 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 the market were to close right now, uh, the the biggest topping pattern or signal that we have inside of LAM Research is the butterfly cell pattern that it's generating. So we can see the A to B equals CD pattern. In this case here, made a 1 to 1.272. And it appears that this week is going to be a bearish engulfing candle. And so if that's the uh, case out there, and I'll put the uh, week, I'll put my other weekly chart out here, this would suggest, so here, when tops are made, the responsibility of sellers is to try to push price down to at least support. And here, that number is 250.53. So we have a bunch of numbers coming together in that 250-ish area. I say you just got to be patient right now. And as price gets down there, let's retake a look at it, see if there's any other patterns that have set up. All right, Jim? Yeah, I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. You bet. Thanks for calling. That was Jim in Palm Harbor. When we get back from this break, we're going to go to Brent in Martinez, California. And I believe we're going to take a look at Myelin Pharmaceuticals. Great. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. We're taking a look at, uh, well, I think we're going to take a look at Mylan Pharmaceuticals, but let's make sure of that. Let's go out to Brent in Martinez, California. Brent, how are you feeling uh, today? How's that cold uh, coming along? I'm doing much better. I actually was able to take a nice hike this morning. Just, you know, trying to put the thing behind me at this point. Perfect. You sound much better in just a couple of days' time. So that is uh, promising. So is it Mylan that we're going to take a look at? It is, and thank you very much for taking the call, and I hope you're sure. doing well. Absolutely. Um, yeah, yeah. I was doing a search last night and, and uh, this morning to see if I could find anything that was uh, at or near a bottom, even in this you know market we've been yes. having. And so I did come across this one. I, what I'm having a little trouble with is that uh, I can make arguments kind of two different ways on this thing. It's, it did come down and do a test today of uh, – Low it did back in June, yes, at 1663. But it also kind of broke that area of, uh, I guess you could call it a swing point with some volume. So that, and there's potential. I guess you could kind of say there's a potential for an AB equals CD down to around 15, and and that. But it's also making a kind of a bullish reversal candle today. So I just wanted to look at all that. Is, is this potentially a bottom here, or, or is it, there's a better chance of it going down at that 15? What do you think? Yeah, so during the break, uh, because we had a few minutes out there, uh, in essence, I went through the same process that you did, uh, which was uh, taking a look at that. And this is the daily chart, folks, that we're first uh, taking a look at. And Brent had mentioned it looks like the uh, candle session was uh, May 31st, 2019, and this made a low with 11.1 .1 million shares. The uh, bottom or the low was 1663 and the high was 1717. Price is trading above 1717. Uh, the volume today is uh, much lighter, 3.5 million shares. Um, the test, though, was with about 13 million shares on November the uh, 6th, and that was 13 going against 11. So what I did, because, you know, I saw the same thing and asked myself that same question, okay, is this a rejection of a swing point? And the answer would be yes on the daily time frame. But we also know that price is trading below the bottom of its profile, which is 1818, and certainly the top, which is 1953. There is no center, or the center is actually at the bottom. So uh, at 1818, and really that level should have held. It didn't. Should have been strong support. It didn't. 
So it's made its way down to that swing point. So what I did then next, Brent, to try to help me answer that question, you know, is it possible that that is a bottom? Just using our technical tools out here, I then just went back to the weekly chart and said, okay, well, what's the weekly volume on that swing point? And that takes us back to May 27, the beginning, May 27, 2019. Now, there was about 49 million shares. And this week, we're at 54 million shares and price is still trading below the high of that weekly level which was 1892 so then at this stage um, if it is a bottom what you should see your is a move up to maybe 2018 the top of the weekly profile out there but I don't know that the work is done to the downside it seems kind of risky to me based upon what the weekly chart is telling us versus just any one single day out there you know we would have preferred or I would have preferred to have seen it actually test the low which was that 1663 level so that's the first thing. So is it, a, is it a tradable bottom like a trade? It's possible. I can see that with that bullish reversal candle. The problem is I don't have a pattern associated with that candle. And if there's one thing that I proved to myself early on in uh, studying Japanese candlesticks, and I have a software package that allows me to go test candles, uh, let's say a bullish engulfing and said, as soon as I saw a bullish engulfing, if I went long, you know, what would my win loss rate be? And you'd have to have some type of uh, exit strategy. Um, it, you, I, it proved to myself that you couldn't just trade off of candles. Well, bullish or bearish candles. And that's where when I put it all together, Brent, it was, hey, when these candles form at the completion of a pattern, and you can test this on other patterns that you trade, that's your signal that the cavalry has arrived. And I just don't have that as we speak right now. The other thing, the other element, if this is, if let's say that this has formed a bottom, uh, what's going to be important for this to do over time, Brent, is it must close above Stevie's red line on the monthly time frame chart. If we just take a look at Mylan and we look over the past year, uh, what we'll see is this red line has been a real deflection point that goes for two months ago and it goes for the high of this month uh, so 2043 or whatever that number might be as price moves that line will also adjust um, you'd really want to see a close above that now you can say between 1734 and 2043 that might be enough of a trade uh, for you but I, so I don't have any bottom signals for any time frame yet for Mylan pharmaceuticals and so kind of keeps me saying eh, more and more i can't be overly bullish on it okay no that's good that's what i wanted to know it's it's i have no problem with being patient and just waiting and if i miss something that's fine yeah. but uh yeah there's there's i wanted to know if there was some other you know <clears throat> potential signals there that would <clears throat> give me some confidence that i could i could go into the thing but that's i, I like what you're telling me yeah you know just not every bottom to see yeah, not every bottom is going to form with one of the uh, handful, four or five, uh, six different uh, patterns that I look look for. I recognize that. It's just that I have more confidence when those patterns are present uh, that then we can say, okay, here here's the clear signal and here's the reasons why. I think you made the case that the swing point on the daily has been tested, being tested and rejected right now today on lighter volume. But the weekly offers us a message of caution right now, and the monthly most certainly does. So that's why I've got to be kind of so-so on, on making that a bottom call. No, and I do, like you said, prefer when you have more stuff lined up at the same time. It just gives you a little bit more to, to you know, trade on and a little more confidence yes. that, you know, that the potential is better in your favor at that point. Absolutely. Absolutely. All righty. Well, look, uh, keep uh, healing up and uh, we'll look forward to uh, thanks for the call. We'll look forward to uh, chatting with you soon, I hope. All right. Thank you very much. Steve. have a great weekend and I'm sure I'll talk to you soon. Absolutely. Sounds great. That was Brent in Martinez, California. We had a question come in here from uh, Jim Ann, and Jim is in uh, General Electric, and uh, kudos to Jim. Jim continues to raise his stop to the upside out there. Now, what General Electric is doing today, Jim, is it's trading above a swing point, a key swing point of a potential A to B equals CD to the upside, but that swing point takes you back to February 25th. Here, let me just expand out the uh, screen for you so you can see this. Uh, price is trading above it, but 
it's doing it with much lighter volume. Again, the volume back on Fe February 25th was 301 million shares for that day. Today, you're up above with 34 million shares. That does not mean that we don't have an A to B equals CD to the upside. No. Because it's passing the B point, and if it closes over 1129, what does that A to B equals CD projection tool give you for a uh, price objective? And that, the one to one, would take you up into the 1254 area inside of GE. Price is above the top of its daily profile. Price is above the top of its weekly profile. Just like uh, price is over the swing point on a daily basis, it's the same swing point from a weekly standpoint that had 694 million shares. You're at 352 million shares today. Nonetheless, price is over and closing above its weekly top of its box. So we get back from this breakout here. Let's finish taking a look at General Electric for Jim, who's long and doing well. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. We're taking a look at uh, General Electric G. He's the ticker symbol for Jim, and he's in this. He continues to um, to move up his stops. Uh, Jim, the you probably know this. Your average true range over the last 10 trading sessions, 35 cents out there. So as you adjust your stop, probably some Fibonacci expansion of that level, 1.272 or 1.618. So when we take a look at this, we know that price is uh, taking on a swing point. Looks like it's going to close above a swing point. That's all positive. Uh, Profile-wise, the price targets to the upside will become 1238 and 1387. That's the bottom of, I'm sorry, that's the center and top uh, levels for the monthly time frames out here. Now, we take a look at the daily. Go back to the daily. Look at my Ninja Trader chart. So we can see the A to B equals CD pattern that completed. And uh, the 1 to 1.272 was around 760. There was a Three River Morning Star that took place on August 29th. That gave you the signal for the completion of that pattern out here. Um, what we can say, because you're trying to manage this, when this uh, most recently bottomed out here, when I say most recently bottomed, I'm referring to the date of October 3rd. It was a TD setup nine count pattern that uh, identified that bottom, then the price began moving higher. The beauty was that uh, this is the first time on a daily chart in a while where we've seen the price take out that resistance level, that TD9 resistance level of 954. So you're trying to be conservative on this. You don't want to be greedy is what your email says. So therefore, now is the time to really adjust your stops because uh, we do know that price is taking over a swing point with lighter volume. So not necessarily conviction behind the move, but not a reason to exit the trade because you're taking out a swing point. Today is going to be bar number eight of a TD setup nine count out here. Remember that high or short term high can take place in bar eight, nine or the bar following nine. It doesn't have to identify a top. And that's a reason that you would go ahead and you would use um, a stop like you're doing. I, I, even if this got to a nine count, I would do that. And one of the reasons is maybe this is a significant bottom out here. Now, the only bottoming signal that I have was on the daily time frame. If I take a look, for example, at the monthly time frame chart out here, I don't have a bottoming pattern. I don't have an A to B equals CD that I can uh, draw upon out here. I don't have really anything to uh, assist us there. So it's really the daily. Here, I'll put the weekly chart up for you. You know, on the weekly chart, is there anything of a substance for you and I to take a look at to assist us in that in this trade and and the answer is no so it's really the daily that's providing us with information so I say kudos to you on the uh, trade and keep trading it the way that you are just adjusting your stop uh, if you will now if price gets beyond uh, so let's say today's going to be day number eight Monday day number nine Tuesday day number ten if price on Wednesday takes out whatever the high is over these last couple of days out here, you know, you want to stay with the trade. It just tells you about the substantial momentum behind the move. So I think you're doing all the right things there with regard to uh, GE and uh, best of luck. Uh, and uh, thanks so much for writing in. Another question that uh, was coming or has come in. Let me get to these here. Uh, let's see this. This one. Well, it might be easier if I do this. Uh, this one coming in from let me just read it here my question is when you say a market is making a new high or low but unless relative strength what does this mean is it just that there is bearish or bullish candles no it has nothing to do with the candlestick um let me continue reading another question is how do you use different time frames looks to me looks to me that you end up using let's say a 30 minute or 60 minute based on which time frame the td setup is working with okay so that might need more of a, I might need more clarification from me on the message, but let's just let's see, let's let's do what I can to to answer your question. So, how am I going to do this? Let's do this. Let me find a. Let me just quickly uh, bounce out to a, a chart, and uh, here we go. So, uh, is that the chart I want to use? Just to, if you would, uh, just bear with me for a moment. I'm just here. We go. So th this is a, this is a really a perfect example. I'm going to use the NQ and I'm going to use a 30 minute time frame chart uh, for us here. Maybe it kind of knocks off two birds with one stone. So time frames, they're they're just simply subjective with regard to what is it that you want to use as your time frame to make your trading decisions. So, for example, if you and I find a pattern on a 30 minute time frame chart, what we should do is really stay with inside that 30 minute time frame chart to manage that trade. Now, that doesn't mean we shouldn't see what's going on above us and below us. It's like flying a plane. You want to know what's above you, what's below you. 
out there. So that means you want to step up to the next time frame, whatever that is. I just say multiply 30 times 2. That's what really takes me to that hourly or that 60-minute time frame. Now, please recognize that when I look at intraday time frame charts out here, it only applies to futures contracts. Quite frankly, I am uninterested, totally uninterested in a short-term time frame chart for some type of uh, equity, like Apple. Um, it's it, what do, First of all, you've got to only use, in my opinion, you can only use a 30-minute bar because there's six and a half hours of trading. At least you have 13 bars with equal time spans on them. Um, so, so I think that that is real important. I don't get folks that use other time frames, but hey, hey, you got to do what you do. But I'm just simply sharing with you that you've never seen me. Somebody ask about analysis of General Electric as an example, and then you've never seen me go to an intraday chart to try to make some type of it. It just doesn't work for me. Okay, so. So that's with regard to time frames. Now, with regard to those time frames, those shorter term time frames are going to be more noise, way more noise than if we look at a yearly chart or a monthly or a quarterly, uh, and certainly even more noise than a daily time frame chart. But what they do is the patterns that I use here, and what's really helpful during the show is to be able to show you these patterns. And on these intraday time frames, they're going to appear uh, more often. And they assist us in being able, to, being able to call the market. So when you can see this working on these time frames, it's why, and it, hopefully, it will will uh, provide you with tools to do bottom fishing, like Brent is doing some bottom fishing, looking at I think it was Mylan Pharmaceuticals or or what have you. You know, you're looking for some type of bottom signal. So now let's come to the NQ 30 minute time frame chart. What do I mean when uh, price is moving higher and doing with less and doing it with less relative strength? I simply am using the relative strength indicator. Now, that was developed by Wells Weiler back in around the mid-'80s, I believe. Can't quote me on the uh, year out there. And I developed my own use of that tool out here. And and uh, I did it through lots of testing and back testing and so forth. And uh, this pattern, by the way, many of you have heard this, uh, the, the pattern, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator Top pattern, has been present before the beginning of every single bear market going back into the 1860s that I've been able to track. Every single one. Now, this is important. Not every single Rhodes Momentum Indicator top leads to a bear market. When topping patterns form, or when bottoming patterns form, the way I'd like you to really think about it is it's shifting the ball to the other team. So here in the case of the NQ, using a 30-minute time frame, using that relative strength indicator out here, it's never the first high when a top is being formed that matters. And the first high that occurred out here was at 2.30 in the morning yesterday. At 2.30 in the morning yesterday, it just so happened that was a news-related event. I just happened to know that, okay? That was the release by the Chinese foreign minister out there. But it wasn't that high that was really the issue for the NQ. When we get back from this break, we'll go find out why it was the 12 noon high and really the 12.30 bar that said the market should pull back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. 
If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're taking a look right now. We've got the 30-minute time frame chart up on our screen. We're trying to answer the question here. The question was, uh, when I say a market is making a higher low but on less relative strength, what does that mean? And uh, so if you look at the very bottom panel of the screen, what you'll see out here is the relative strength indicator. And if you take note of the uh, bar that formed out here, and, and the relative strength, uh, let's just call it a energy meter out here. And the energy meter uh, relative strength index was at its highest high at 2.30 in the morning yesterday on a 30-minute time frame chart for the NQ. Now, the reading was, I don't know, 72, 73, whatever it might have been out there. That wasn't the issue. When the market continues to move higher, which it began doing right here, uh, and when I say higher, I'm really referring to looking at the the the, uh, the the trading high of the session and comparing what the relative strength index is at that stage in time. And what we can see here is the relative strength index was making lower highs out there. So it's a divergence that takes place. And what we do is what I do is I say you want to wait for the bearish reversal candle. Well, the first one occurred at 1130, a little dark cloud cover. Now, in a scale of one to five, with five being the strongest bearish reversal candle and zero being the weakest, this is basically a level two one to two it's really level two so we say from one to five versus zero to five out there when i get a bearish reversal candle especially on a shorter term time frame chart you always like to see follow through so it just, just says wait one more bar and if you'd waited one more bar you would not have gotten into the trade out here because it made a higher high going into 12 noon but that higher high in price was done with less relative weakness out there using our energy meter the very next candle, the one that took place at 1230, another dark cloud cover. Okay, let's get some follow through. And the follow through took place on the very next candle session. Now, whether or not you would have entered a trade here knowing that support was down right at the bottom of its profile at 85, uh, 8253 out there or not, I don't know the answer to that question uh, for you, but that was the next level of support. And when price broke through that support out here at 1500 hours at three o'clock, what price continued to do was cascade down towards its breakout level. That was 8194. That breakout level was set up by that TD setup nine count. If you want to ask or answer the question, why at 1030 this morning, 
did price stop at 81.94 as it was making a low it went slightly below that but that level was tested and rejected was because you had a selling pattern out here the roads momentum indicator top the role of responsibility is to push price down to support your first level of support we don't know where it's at on this chart we can see it would have been at our TAS market profiles once you break through that even though new profiles are going to form your eventual target should be price coming back to where it broke out and that's really all that it did this morning. I, I've been, I was away from my uh, office all morning, just got back really uh, uh, 15 minutes before uh, sitting in front of the screens here. So this is my first time taking a look at it. But it shouldn't surprise you or shouldn't surprise me that price came back to support where it broken out and rejected that level. Now. What price hasn't done is hasn't taken out resistance. And so we have a relatively quiet day with the NQ trading between 81.94 support and 82.69 as resistance out there. So I hope that answers your question with regard to the time frames again. Uh, part of it is uh, part of it just depending on the type of time frame you like to trade. Some of it is more so as a uh, hopefully a benefit to everyone out there to uh, take a look at these patterns that happen more often on shorter term time frame charts out there but also um, we're looking for I'm looking for a change in trend in the marketplace and so if we're going to see a change in trend in the marketplace one thing I know that will take place is levels of support will fail let me come back to the NQ let me pull this chart over here and so irrespective I don't know if that's a word but I'm using it of TAS market profiles out here and here's your 30, your 60, and your two-hour time frame chart, just doubling each, 30 to 60 to 120-minute time frame. We will see level key levels of support fail. Those key levels of support are, the, in my opinion, are these breakout areas. And when we take a look at the NQ, and if the question is, has the market topped, I ask you that, I pose this question to you. Look at the 30-minute, the upper time frame chart for the NQ on a 30 minute because if a market is going to change trends it just seems to me it's logical that we will see levels of support begin to fail on intraday charts first right so 30 minute chart you should see a failure then you should see a failure on the 60 minute chart then you should see a failure on the 120 minute chart then you can go to the 240 then you can go to the 480 if you'd like and then you go to the 500 or the minute or you get just the, the daily right and if you take a look at the NQ here and I'm asking each of you out there that are watching on Tiger TV or watching inside the Tiger's Den you tell me has the NQ topped no now maybe we have seen the high tick in there but is there any evidence to tell us that the NQ has topped when we take a look at the 30 minute and the 60 minute time frame chart and the absolute answer is no because in a bull market when you talk about the buy the dips well where is the dip where is it that you buy and the answer becomes find a support level for whatever time frame it is that you want to manage your trades and just simply go to that now again inside the an individual equity I can't condone you using a 30 or a, I mean a 30 minute chart yeah but a 60 minute or 120 minute time frame chart it doesn't work it doesn't work for me uh, but if you're trying to just simply call the general markets out here, just get access to the equity futures contracts and study these patterns, and you too will be able to do what I've done. I, this is no hocus pocus. These are no tricks out there. Um, you know, I became the, the 2018 market timer of the year and still hold on to uh, top levels inside the S&P 500 for the last two years and, and, and current year by just using these exact same tools out there. Now, look. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that these tools work 100% of the time. I think they do because when they don't work and they fail, you exit the trade. To me, that's a good thing, too. It's how you minimize your losses and, and say, okay, this is a game. This is like a football game out there. Now, your money is on the line. And when your money is on the line, you have to be able to make objective decisions on what to do. Because subjectivity says, you know, this thing just broke through my stop, uh, but maybe if I sell, the market's going to turn. Has anybody ever said that out there? Uh, yeah, probably a few of us. And unfortunately, I don't really think that you or I have that kind of power in the market. 
I don't think there's some market God that is just waiting for you and I to take action to come simply. Then you'd have to believe that everything is happening to you in life. And you know, Stevie thinks just the opposite. So there's hopefully that answers your question. Now it took a little while to do that, but uh, I did want to. And, and I think we just answered the next question, which was, Steve, is the market is ready to short? Hey, how about that? That fed right into that. And the answer that Stevie would say, well, if you're looking for a signal from the NQ, the absolute positive answer is no. And what will you know to look for Sunday evening? Say something bad opens, happens over the weekend. You'll be looking at levels like 81.94 and 81.74 and 82.06 for your clues. Closes below those, say maybe it has. We're not there right now. We'll be right Basil Chapman has just announced a live 90-minute webinar he'll be conducting for subscribers to his daily trading newsletter, The Opening Call, which will be taking place Tuesday, November 19th from 5 till 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time, titled A Comprehensive Review of the Chapman Wave Techniques and Market Outlook Ahead for 2020. This is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial to The Opening Call while gaining access to Basil's live subscriber event taking place later this month. With some stock picks up 15 to 30% this year alone, Basil will review many of the Chapman Wave techniques that helped in their successful analysis, as well as providing the sectors and stocks that he thinks will be of importance heading into 2020. For all the details, check out the opening call on the front page of TFNN.com. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year Treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. So let's spend the last couple of minutes here. Let's go take a look at some of the daily indices out here, see what's going on, some of the reasons why Stevie's looking for a potential market top out here, recognizing we're still in our uh, seasonally favorable cycle out here. So if we take a look at the New York Stock Exchange, uh, it's completed a uh, an A to B equals CD pattern. It did it yesterday with its bearish shooting star candle out there. No follow through yet to the downside. And the New York Stock Exchange would need, excuse me, to close below 13,316 to generate a change in trend 
signal. So that's the New York Stock Exchange. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, Wilsh or the Nasdaq Composite. Look at the big boys. What do we have out here? Um, well, what we have out here is uh, nothing. Nothing. No pattern. Okay, so we don't have a pattern in a NASDAQ composite. I was just looking just to make sure. Let's go take a look at the Wilshire 5000. What do we have? Uh, oh, 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 wait a minute here. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, Steve-O. Yep, nothing. I thought, uh, yep, yep, still, still nothing. But I went back to just double check in the NASDAQ, compo uh, NASDAQ composite. Let's see the Wilshire 5000. Do we have any patterns out here? The Wilshire 5000? No, we don't. Uh, there's an A to B equals CD. That's formed if you need a bearish reversal candle today to confirm that pattern. Um, how about the transports? What are the transports doing? Is there a topping signal out here? Topping signal in the transports is wave number seven. That's letter G. That took place yesterday. Shooting star candle. Just of interest. Doesn't matter. But still wave G. Transports would need to close below 10.932 to generate a change in trend signal. Uh, let's take a look at the semiconductor index. What is it doing out here? We take a look at the SOX. The SOX says um, uh, no. I take that back. The semiconductor index has confirmed an A to B equals CD, and it did it with this Three River Evening Star. The high of bar nine became resistance. Yesterday was a test of that resistance level and a close below it. So you got a, now the socks would need to close below 1707 to confirm a top. Well, folks, our time is up. Thanks so much for being here today. Hey, tune in Monday morning, 8 a.m. I'm going to do the show live at 8, recorded from 8 to 9. If you listen at the normal time, I'll make it as relevant as I can. Have a great weekend, folks.